power with the authority of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Daniel 7, 13 through 14, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near, near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, because it is forever, brethren. Matthew eleven twenty seven through 30 The words of Jesus himself, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, except the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. This is why I think most folks, they don't know both. You see, they just don't. Many of them preach one, they preach the other, but they don't know both. I digress. 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Matthew 26, 63 through 64. But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Son of God. 64. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 28, we're going to see Jesus has all this power, then he will give it back to the Father. 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by men came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 23, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. And I believe the coming is soon, brethren, I truly do. 24, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his, his feet. 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 27, for he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest, which means expected, that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be in all. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And every bit of power is. Your king has it all. So when you start to feel a little discouraged, a little down, your king has all the power. You can't get but so so discouraged, as we've looked at before in Revelation 21. Eight. It's, it's, understandable to, it's understandable to be a little fearful of the evil of this world and bad things, but you can't be but so fearful. Jesus Christ doesn't like it. Your Almighty Father does not like it. If you love Jesus and he loves you and you have a, a, a relationship with him and you believe in him, if he has all power and we know that he does, you can't be but so afraid. All right? You just can't. John 14, and let me say something about those sheep. That's us. That's symbolic of us. He ain't going to leave us. He ain't going to leave us. It's not going to happen. John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. It means they'll dwell in you. They'll live in you. And that's it. That's, that's what you want. You want them to live in you, to dwell in you for life till the end. John chapter 15, pay attention, brethren. I am the true vine, and my Father is, is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, which means he cleans it, he trims it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. 
4. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, excel, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Let me say it again for you. For without Jesus, we can do nothing. Nothing. 6. If a man abide in me, excuse me, let me, let me go over. Number six, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Seven, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Luke 1, 30-33. And the angel said unto her, talking to Mary, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. John three thirty five through 36 The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. 36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. Listen to me again. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. If you don't believe, if Jesus is not your life, you're not going to see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Jesus the judge. And no greater war has been done to try to take uh, this away from Jesus because folks don't want to be judged. They don't want to be held accountable. It doesn't matter, you see. It doesn't matter. John, what matters is Jesus. That's it. John 5, 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. John 5, 27, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. John 5, 30, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the father which hath sent me. Jesus raises us from death. Again, the more power and the authority of Jesus Christ. That's who will raise you and judge you. Jesus. John 5, look at that beautiful picture. That's your king. That's who will raise you. That's who will give you eternal life. John 5, 21. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. John six thirty nine. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all of which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but I should raise it up again at the last day. John six forty. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. John 6.44, no man can come to me except the Father which, which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. John 6.54, whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Romans 14.6-9, he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord. He eateth not and giveth God thanks. Everything that you do is through the Father and Jesus. Everything. Everything. For none of us liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself. Don't you see the connection? We are connected to, a, to, to, to the Father and Jesus in a way that our poor little minds just can't comprehend. But when you do start to comprehend it, that's what it's all about. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be the Lord both of the dead and the living. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, not Yeshua or any other name, it's Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hebrews 1, 1 through 10. God, 
who at sundry times and in divers manner spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now listen, brethren. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. For being made so much better than the angels, and he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son. The Father has never said to any angel, You are my son. He said it to Jesus, and he also said it to, to you and I. Think about that. This day have I begotten thee, and I again and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But Jesus was the first. And again, when he bringeth in the First begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And the and of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved the righteousness and, ha and hath hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above all thy fellows. Jesus is first and foremost. 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Hebrews 2, 5 through 10. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection, subjection to the world to come whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, this is talking about David, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. And this is talking about Jesus. Notice it just said he was made above the angels. Now he's lower. He was a little lower than the angels, brethren, when he walked on this earth with us, like us, like us. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and did set him over the works of thy hands. Thou put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Jesus did it all for you, all for you. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. 1 Peter 3.22 Who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Revelation 17.14 These shall make war with the Lamb. This is, there are, these are the enemies of Jesus. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him, you brethren, all of his family, are called chosen and faithful, his family. The Lion of Judah is returning soon. The enemy has no clue. They're not supposed to. Revelation 19, 11 through 16. This is talking about the return of, of Jesus. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed upon him white horses, clothed in fine white linen, white and clean, pure. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. It's not a game. 16. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Now there is the hand of Jesus Christ. It's mighty. You just read how mighty it is. It's yours. Reach out and take it.